Hi, hi, Crystal here. Welcome to another video with the Intact Immersive HQ. A little while ago, I did a video on simple pro touch designer tips and habits. If you missed that video, I will put it in the caption below, but I want to make a sequel. <laughs> this video might have a little bit more complicated, advanced tips and habits. Maybe it's not. Maybe some of the stuff seems pretty obvious for you, but it might not be obvious for other people. Um, but I think these are kind of valuable things that aren't super flashy and fun, but useful if you want to expand in your touch design journey, and especially if you want to do professional projects that makes it more efficient for your workflow. And these are also a lot of things that I learned while working in commercial projects. So I'm excited to share these with you. So let's begin. <laughs> First kind of thing I want to talk about is viewer active using switch tops for optimization and efficiency. So right now you can see that this is just like a random patch I made of a movie file in banana, having a LFO changing the rotation and then having a null. And then over here, having a switch that's switched between a select top of the, this null and just a um, standard movie file in banana. And right now it is selecting the non-moving one. So over here you see this this line is different than this line. Because it's kind of animating, it means that it is cooking. And over here you see the dash over here of references, it is a animating dash line. But if I turn all of this viewer active off, notice that this is no longer animating this line and the same with these dash lines they're solid uh well not solid but they're not animating anymore and this means it's not cooking and right now it is selecting this one but if i switch this to b zero so it's selecting the first one now you see this is all animating again. So this is this concept is useful if you have a lot of different containers, a lot of different nodes, uh, uh, nodes that you want to um, select what is cooking at, um, at certain times and not have everything cooking at the same time. So using selects and using switches, then you can optimize your network better. So a, for example, if you have a bunch of different looks in different comps and then at the end have a null and then you can use a select that selects through all those, uh, all those comps to have the last null uh, rather than having all of them on at the same time. And this will help uh, prevent you from dropping frame rate and then also crashing your computer or just uh, making it less taxing on your network. My next tip is to use a text port editor. I use Sublime Text, it's free. I'll put it in the caption below if you wanna download it. But whenever I use a different machine and there isn't a text port editor and I'm editing a, a DAT, I just kind of cringe because it just makes things harder. Um, let me show you what I mean. So here's a text DAT. So you can just make a viewer active and edit here in here, which is great. But when you have a text port editor, is go edit content. A text port editor just makes it easier. So it highlights things. So even if I forget, I put the same thing, op switch or parentheses, it makes the whole parentheses for you. And then comma, it makes the two parentheses switch one so you won't forget things as much. If I miss a comma, it'll highlight and let you know that there's something missing. So if you just have like, oh, switch, it's like you're going to have an error because you don't have two, two parentheses, you're missing something. So like once I put a comma, then it's good. The only thing if you, when you use a text port editor, you need to save uh, on top so then it will save uh, below. It can, uh, if you close it, it won't save. So you have to like control S. And where you can set the text bar editor, you do it in your um, edit preferences and in the dats section over here in text editor, you can choose 
um, your own external text editor. So here I have my Sublime text. Another good one that to have, I think uh, I've been using Modern CSV the last um, few months and I really like it. It's also free. I can put in a caption below and I like using this for table dats. I'm editing, show you table dat. And editing this, this pops up. I like using it more than Excel because it's just so simple. And if I put one, two, three, four, save, it just, I like it more sometimes than just using the table, especially if the table gets pretty complicated. So let's talk about table dots. That is my next tip to use table dots. I, when I started a touch designer, I kind of avoided using dots for a good amount of time. And dots are actually really great when you get to use them and it can really help make things more efficient. Um, one kind of method, I have a bunch of different text tops and I need to reference different text tops. I can use a table dot to do that. For example, if I want to put, uh, this is great. And then like all these different liners are, have this stat now, and I can use this to reference. I am reference. I'm going to actually first put in all, this is good practice. I'll call this ref that. And I can drag the stat over here and then I can choose where I want the text. So I want to just be like, oh, hey, I want it to be row one, call one, this. Awesome. Second one, I want it to be column zero and uh, row one, column one. Oops, and I'll delete this. This is, and the last one, this, zero, and two. And I can like I'll just composite all this three together over. This is awesome. And I'll have this font to be positioned. Um, And then it'll be easy for me to switch if I want to switch to different thing. Uh, I want a second line. I can have some control to be able to um, make this to the second line. So like uh, something to make it so it's like, let's use that or less. This is awesome. And this is one example of using um, how you can use table dots getting a little more even another level complicated <laughs> but also uh, this is like really good uh, help and makes things so much easier if it's used in the right way is using listers with table dots so over here is like an example now how i said that other than different examples of using table dots here i have a table dot that has uh different looks just as a reference different paths for this is paths of uh, different files and then different parameters for levels, high R, high G, rotate and scale. So over here, oops, is a simple network I did of a movie file in and over here it references this table. So uh, I call this path, this is a lister tool. Um, you can find listers in the palette go to ui and here is the lister right here you have a lister and then it needs lister needs to see a table so over here input table that you can just drag that in and then it's connected and first delete this because it's already connected here into another lister so over here listers so awesome, great way to do show controls. It has two outputs over here. So I put it to, what I want is the second output, but the first first output is just pretty much like spitting back out what you have over here. But the second output 
it shows a line where you select. So over here, I'm going to select look one, I change to looks one, let's switch to look two, switch to look three, switch to look four. So over here, I have this as a different path. So this is looking at path one. So it is referencing where which file it's looking at. Over here, it referenced the high red, the high G. This references the rotation and the scale. So as you see, as I select different looks, it changes different of uh, the different show controls that I want. And as you can, you can probably have an idea of how this can be very helpful. And over here, the lister, you can use this parameter selected row to select it. So you can use this as if you have a MIDI control or a different button. So like, oh, I'm gonna go to button two, I'm gonna go to button four or something that you can use to trigger that, that like, oh, if this happens, go to Lister and make it to show control three and that will be the output and like Lister's when I first like learned about Lister's I like didn't know how it fit and then and afterwards it sinks in and I try to use Lister's for show controls whenever I can. Last quick tip is to, if you make a tool that you like to save it in the palette. That's something that seems some can be very obvious, but some people don't know that you can do that. Um, if you go into the palette and you go on the bottom, you have a My Component and you can make your own folders over here and then drag whatever tools you like, whatever comps. If I wanted to save this, you can just drag it over here in your in your tools and whenever you open touch designer again it's over here just know that it's only going to be in your your touch designer on that machine if you use the same license and open it like your laptop uh, it won't be in your palette and so see so you have function stores over here uh this like i made a ui template tool that um, I just noticed that oftentimes during projects, I keep on making another UI uh, from scratch, but I'm like, oh, usually I need like an FPS over here. I want to have a way I can just label what project it is on easily in the custom part. And I may like, oh, a grid button that have custom parts of what type of buttons I want and can easily name it um, different things. Um, from here and like have an output. It just makes life faster and easier and more efficient. I hope some of these tips were helpful to you. Let me know if any of them are and um, which one was your favorite, which one that you are excited to try in your next project. Until next time. Bye. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.